<laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. We'll give it a couple minutes there. Tell everybody to start coming over. Venezuela. Eisenhart. Right? Fidemore. Valenzuela. Pereira. Is that how you pronounce your name? Yes, sir. Okay. Great. We got what? Stoltz over on the other side. There he is. Okay, guys over. Is there anybody else? How many's in the class, first of all? Ten? Okay, so we've got six so far. Where's the rest of them? Anybody have an idea? They're all taking a nap, right? Roger that. Okay. On the live stream here, uh, can you see that we have Discord up? Simple yes or no. Okay. Making sure that I have everybody. Ah, Vasquez is here. Wayman. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two more. Who are we missing? Miskel? Okay. So besides Miskel, who else? Grant. All right. And speaking of the devil, and he shall appear. Looks like he's getting on finally. While he disappeared, <laughs> so now we're missing Miskel. There he is. He finally showed up. Just need to get him in the other side here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Waiting for Miskel to pop in here. There he is. Oh, we lost somebody here. Who'd we lose? Okay.
keep getting one or two of you to pop in and out. All right, so my name is Mr. Mayor. We'll go ahead and start getting on this thing. I'm going to hopefully make this thing disappear and bring up my display. Nice pretty display I like to see. I like <laughs> Yeah. Let's see here. Yeah. We'll leave those kind of on there just for gee whiz. All right, so we uh, had one question right now, and this is, okay, good, guys here. Um, so the question is, what exactly is order wire? The explanation that I can come up with is you have baseband. The baseband is either pseudo NRZ or CDI. That's baseband. When you guys talk to each other on the tisser, that is order wire. It's completely separate than the baseband, or excuse me, yeah, baseband, which is either CDI or NRZ. It's on its own separate frequency, which is the uh, 8.5 megahertz when it gets modulated, along with whatever the baseband is. So hopefully that'll explain to you what order wire is. Now, do you want me to show you the schematics and where it's at? Okay. All right, is there any other questions out there that you need me to go over? Okay. Because now's the time to ask, not on the test. Okay. Where at in the uh, schematics do you want me to go? So in other words, the whole tisser is what you're asking for. Yes, no, maybe? The upper part are, okay, so are you asking about the base band? Or are you talking about the RF module in general? Or the receive line or the transmit line? Because the upper part, you know, I'm having a hard time trying to figure out what upper part you're looking for. The RF assembly? Okay, we can do that. You want both transmit and receive? Okay. All right, so if you go to page 5 on your C's and D's, this is a transmit section, better known as the RF assembly. Now, it's going to be kind of difficult to go through this because this is a general set of uh, schematics. It is not the slideshow. Can anybody, can everybody see my mouse when I'm twirling it around or do you want me to make it bigger? Uh, bigger would probably work better. Roger that. Give me a sec. Let me get to my settings here. Oops, wrong one.
pointer size. What the heck? Okay, can you see the pointer? Help me out there, Para. Can you see it? Oh, I can barely see it. Oh, I can barely see it. Okay, let me go back in and see if I can. It's really weird to come off of this set of schematics, and it's just uh. I wonder. Will this work? Little feedback there, sir. Yes, sir. It work. Okay. All right. When it comes oh, out yeah. of the the baseband assembly, okay, this is the RF function. In other words, it's either that two foot cable or the hundred and fifty foot cable coming into the RF assembly right here. We come into this section when it hits this diplexer. Now this is nothing more than baseband, nothing else. So when baseband hits, goes through the diplexer, this diplexer does a couple things. In this case it's going to let us go through with our baseband into the one a1, A4 synthesizer. That's this right here. That's an LRU for those of you that uh, finally didn't know what that was. So with that baseband, you're either having CDI or NRZ along with the order wire. Okay, so tell me what the uh, CDI uh megabits per second was it 6.448 it's been a while since I looked at the tech manual help me out here what's CDI and then NRZ as far as uh, frequency is concerned I think the NRZ is 72 to 4608 and the other one is 6448 you got to look it up in the tech order. Should be page one in the tech order, 1.3.1. One. Because it tells you you have order wire, you have pseudo NRZ, and you have CDI. And by the way, the only place you're going to find pseudo NRZ is in 1.3.1. Uh, the manufacturer did that. Saved a bunch of money just by printing one page that had the pseudo in there. Saved himself thousands of dollars by not having to put the word pseudo in the rest of the schematics. Does anybody find it yet? Not yet. All right. I'll wait till you pull it up and tell me what those frequencies are. Or megabits per second. You can relate it because it's a digital signal versus an analog. So when they say megabits per second, you still have a digital signal, but it's got to go up and down just like a regular uh, AC waveform is. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So, when you have baseband and order wire coming in, you see this triangle right here? Anytime you see a triangle, those are amplifiers. So, that particular place is where your uh, amplification can happen when you have that 150 foot cable. There's also a little caveat on to it because you know I can get into real detail. We used to teach down to component level in that general area, but there is a little bit of compression if there's too much of the signal that's coming in. Well, it comes through your phase lock loop and into your voltage controlled oscillator, and that's what dictates the frequency that's coming out. 
Now you notice that it says 7 gigahertz VCO. Well, you're going to modulate because it's FM at this particular point, and you're going to get it up to approximately, I think it's 7.2 to 7. Point, uh, what's half of 15.4? Is it 7.2? No. Should be 7. Point five something other somebody figure it out make me use my calculator 15.25 divided by 2 equals 625 gigahertz so that's what's coming out of that VCO right here when we hit this multiplier, it does a couple things for us. Again, it's an amplifier, but the amplifier is going to do something really crazy for us. Anybody ever heard of the word harmonics? Especially if you've been in band, you know what harmonic is. But harmonics are nothing more than a generation of multiple notes. Well, in this case, the 7.2 to 7.625 generates a second harmonic. So first we amplify this, and then this is called the first harmonic. Our second harmonic is from 14.4 to 15.25. Amazing, huh? So when it hits the bandpass filter here, the bandpass filter is only going to pass the 14.4 to the 15.25. When you come into this amp, again it's a triangle, we're going to amplify it up more because it's a FET, field effect transistor. When it hits this FET, it's going to generate more harmonics, but this little thing is called what? Remember the branch assembly? That's an isolator. So the isolator is going to separate anything that's coming from our antenna that if it, so for some weird reason, gets down through here, this isolator is going to prevent it from getting back into it. We have something called a harmonic filter because with any FM signal, when we amplify it, will generate harmonics. Now this harmonic filter is pretty much going to take the top end off and let our first harmonic through, which is the 14.4 to the 15.25. We're going to hit the transmit uh, circulator, and what that does for us is it's going to tell us which way to go. That circulator, when we are in operate, so let me ask you guys this question, uh, Prera, Guy, or, yeah, anyone that's got a mic, have you guys started on your Tisser Labs yet? No, sir. Okay, yeah. so you have not seen it. Well, there's two functions on your <laughs> Tisser. One is in standby, the other one is in operate. We are going over operate right now. What does operate mean? We're transmitting out. So whenever you put the tisser on the tripod, one of the first things it has you to do is making sure that the baseband assembly has the operate and standby switch in standby. Because the last thing you want to do is apply power and find out that it's in operate. Why? That's very dangerous. It's like you uh, are trying to work on an antenna and the transmitter's keyed. Not a good thing. Believe it or not, I've had an RF burn and it is not a good thing. Ended up with third degree burns on my thumb with an LMR radio. Not a pleasant feeling. So, when we are in operate, this circulator is going to channel it 
out of the standby relay because we got that standby relay is also controlled by the uh, operate and standby switch. In this case, it's in operate. And you'll notice that the way it should go in operate is this way out through the waveguide. So you have two circulators right here that's going to tell us, hey, we need to go out the antenna. Now this circulator right here has a double duty. It channels the transmit one way and the receive the other way. And it works off of a passive device. You'll notice it says a duplexer in that point. And a duplexer is actually a, uh, uh, in this case, you see we have three connections right here. One is transmit, the other one is receive. There is a device called a duplexer that has filters on those in and it knows which way to channel transmit and it knows which way to channel receive. It is truly amazing for something that is a passive device that works that way. The engineers got that one right. So are you clear on transmit side, Airman Guy? Yes, sir. All right, so let's go to the receive side of the house. Now, again, we're still in operate. So we're going to receive the signal. The circulator is going to know which way to go. We're going to quit that. Why is this? There we go. Go through the transmit relay, which is controlled by the standby operate switch. In this case, it is in operate. Operate means transmit. We hit the pre selector filter. Ah, let me tell you about that pre selector filter. On the front, panel of your RF assembly, bottom left, there's this little uh, knob that operates your pre-selector. There's a window on there that you're going to adjust to your receive frequency, not the transmit. With that in mind, you are doing what's called pre selection of the signal. In other words, the last thing you want coming into this tisser is a plethora of frequencies because it's all hitting it at once here. All you want is just a small range of those frequencies. So what we're going to do is we're going to come through this filter and hit what's called an isolator. Again, it's part of the branch assembly. So when you guys went over the branch assembly, let me show you something here. If you take this section right here, whoops, forgot to include the circulator. This is your branch assembly. That's your branch assembly. All of it is a passive device. So when we get out of the isolator, now the isolator's sole idea here is to keep, believe it or not, this from going out to the antenna because that would be creating interference. So when we get in here, here's your LNA, your low noise amplifier. With any RF, that you receive, you're going to have to amplify it. Why? Because it's a very weak signal. We take this signal and come into an IRM. I want to point to you the receiver encoder. Again, comes out of the encoder th through the uh, PLL times two bandpass filter and then up in here. Now, with a mixer, you're going to have both the receive frequency 
and the oscillator frequency because that's what it is. It's an oscillator. Here's your transmit oscillator here. Well, it actually consists of this. Those two are two separate oscillators. Now, with the receive oscillator, what should be the IF that we want coming out? Well, right here. It shows you right here, the 70 megahertz. But au contraire, there is this little thing called electronics. The word heterodyne comes into play. You guys should remember heterodyning from Dolan Hall, if I'm not mistaken. And heterodyning tells you that you're going to mix two frequencies and get four out. With those four out, you should have the two originals, one coming from the oscillator, the other coming from your antenna, and you should be able to get the sum and the difference of those two frequencies. Well, with this encoder, it's going to tell us what frequency we need to be, and it should be 70 megahertz off of the received frequency. Just to give you an idea, if we were to do 15 megahertz as our receive, we should be like either 70 megahertz below the 15 megahertz or 15 gigahertz. Sorry, didn't mean to screw up the the megahertz versus gigahertz. We got 15.070 or 14.930. One of those two is going to come out of that oscillator. It's going to mix. And with anything that gets mixed, we've got to amplify. There's our preamp. Now, it's coming out with four frequencies, but we always focus on the 70 megahertz because that's the IF we want out. We come into another amplifier. Now, electronics is kind of funny. It doesn't like to step things up in one great big basket so to speak because it generates a lot of noise if you don't do it right. Uh, the FET filter to, or the FET amplifier that's down here in the transmit, well it's specifically set up for that. But with this particular amplifier we're good. We've amplified it in stages. That's the way that 70 megahertz wants to be done. When you see this bandpass filter, this is your overall selectivity for the radio. It wants that 70 megahertz and that's it. So what you see at this point is the sum is weeded out. The two originals are weeded out all because of this bandpass filter. This bandpass filter is, and if you read your tech order, will say it has a uh, plus or minus 10 megahertz. That means from 60 megahertz to 80 megahertz is that band pass of allowing that 70 megahertz to go through. Remember Rego? Here's where your IF comes into play. Now with AGC, AGC is always a received term. Always. I've never seen it used as transmit. ALC, TGC, you know, things like that. That's your transmit gain control. The object of AGC is for a variant RF input. In other words, uh, if your dishes are 50 feet apart compared to, t you know, less than 10 miles, that's a significant difference between those two. So, the idea behind the IF AGC is to compensate for your RF. So if it goes up or goes down at any point, it can compensate. Uh, excuse me for just a second. Please excuse me for a dog barking. That was not the. That was kind of a surprise from my part. I thought he was gone. So you have the AF, uh, the AGC. You'll notice it says IF, so it's amplifying the 70 megahertz. 
So let me give you context here for AGC. Now you've probably heard it, but I'm going to reemphasize it again. With AGC is like a function uh, in your car. You have radio station. If you did not have AGC in that car radio, and as you're getting closer to that radio station, you're going to have to constantly turn it down. But once you pass the radio station and keep going farther away from it, you're going to have to turn it up. That's what AGC does. So if you're an air traffic control, uh, let's try that again, an air traffic control tower, and you didn't have AGC, the plane that's 200 miles out is transmitting to you, and you're having to turn that thing up all the way just to hear what that person is saying. As it gets closer to the base, you know, for landing, you're going to have to turn it up. AGC compensates it for you, hence the automatic gain control. So you're not having to constantly vary that volume control knob in order to uh, make things even. So that's where that Rago comes into play. So when we hit this diplexer, we're going to let the 70 megahertz out and go off the rear of the RF assembly. We have done nothing but do RF assembly in this case. There are two assemblies. One's the baseband, one's the RF. Most of your controls come from the baseband. There are a small amount of controls on the RF assembly. So if you hadn't noticed, you had baseband come up and down into the synthesizer but you had your 70 megahertz coming out of the control and distribution LRU and going out the rear of the RF assembly. Hmm, it's all on one cable. And if you take a look at the cable itself, it has a very small RF uh, pin in there, which is basically looking like regular, you know, uh, cable for your TV. So you have a lot of pins on there, but you have one cable section there. That line is going back and forth between your baseband assembly and RF assembly. So you have, uh, you have baseband at that CDI or NR, pseudo NRZ as well as water wire to be mixed in the synthesizer LRE, or you're having the 70 megahertz go out and on that line from your receive section of the RF assembly. So that's what the RF assembly does. It's fun, but it's controlled with the um, standby operate switch. Now, Hmm, interesting. It's the first time I've used this part. When we go into standby, let me see if I can find me another. This is a little bit easier. When we go into standby, see a standby switch right here? It's going to control the data switch. What's the data switch got to do anything? Oh, contraire. Look at the receive encoder and look where it ends up at. It goes to the data switch. Now, if you have read your study guide workbook, there's this thing in there, I think it's uh, right before you get to the tisser section uh, on what they call diversity system. You have frequency and you have uh, polarization, and there's two others that go along, but I just want to focus on the frequency diversification. When you go to start doing the tisser, it's going to tell you to put in one set of frequencies for transmit and a different, different set of frequencies for receive. They should be about 200 megahertz apart. Why? 
because you don't want your transmit to interfere with your receipt. Okay? There's this one little thing, when you flip it in standby, we always call it loop back. Okay, well, how do we do loop back if our frequencies are different? Well, that's where this receiver encoder and the data switch comes into play. So when we flip that from operate to standby, it takes the, stand, uh, the transmitter encoder completely out of the equation and just uses the receive encoder. So basically, coming out of our uh, transmit section right here, it is actually going to be the receive frequency too. So that way, when we get a loop back, we are literally looping back the same frequency so we can check the inside of our radio. Now you're going to go through these checks when you hit lab. And hopefully you'll understand what I'm trying to explain here by doing that. So it, it pretty much generates a receive frequency, comes back in, and you get your 70 megahertz out that goes back to your baseband. It generates a 1k hertz tone, I think. No, wait a minute. 2.6k hertz tone. I'm going to warn you ahead of time. Do not, repeat, do not have the headset on when you are doing this check because you're going to become deaf real quick. Uh, what happens is, is when you put the test tone on and that 2.6 comes out, there is no volume control for the headset and it will blast your ear. So just warning you ahead of time, that's a safety uh, part on that, but it doesn't show it in the tech order. We just know that when you guys have the headset on, we hear this, oh crap! Yeah, turn the test tone on and he had the headset on. Don't do it. It's, it's not worth your hearing. <laughs> okay, hopefully that's what you wanted to see on the RF assembly. Did I meet your needs on that, Airman Guy? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything else you need, you need me to uh, go over on this? Uh, nothing from myself personally okay everybody else I don't bite by the way so please type it in the chat go ahead Miskel. oh I sound good okay because Monday we're going to be doing question and answer period to see if you guys are uh, getting this information and understanding it because I will tell you right now that test is a bear. I cannot emphasize that. Hi Sergeant Young. Hey, what's going on Mr. Mayor? What's up class? Yeah. Howdy. How's everybody doing? Good. How about you? Chilling. Old Wayman. And more. MC Nelson's blocked too. Wait a minute. Yeah, they get older. Yeah, no, it's just <laughs> I was just browsing around and uh, I saw that you were doing a go live, and I was like, hey, "What are the classes you teaching?" And I was like, "Two hundred nineteen." I was like, "Oh snap! I know that class. I have them from Black Two. What's up?" And then I pop here, I pop in here real quick and say, "Hey." Hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yay! Uh, signal flow. Yay! Hi, sir. Do you need um? Do you need me for anything? Do we stay in here? Or I'm, I get I'm, I'm good. If you want to stick around, you can. I'm, oh, no, I'm I good. think I'm Sir, getting ready to I should know if you want me to. Okay, cool. Well, um, yeah, if you just if you need any help at any point with uh, any of these guys, just give me a heads up, and I'll definitely pop in here and help you out, sir. Roger that. Uh, I'll right. need to talk to you later on after this, so yeah, I'll, buzz I'll me, message uh, you. Buzz me a PM, sir. Yes, sir. I'll talk okay. to you later. All right. All right. So, is there anything else you guys need me to go over that needs to be explained? Don't be afraid. This is your time to uh, ask for help. Don't be afraid. Nothing on PCM? Not yet. Do you know PCM? 
You know signaling formats? What they do, how they do it? Can you go over signaling formats? Yeah, we could do that Monday because it's going to take a long time. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty intense. I like to come out with a full, uh, hey, this is how I do it. And I go through the slideshow, and it takes me about 45 minutes to an hour uh, for all the signaling formats and, and explaining each one of them to where you get an idea of what's going on. So that way, nothing is uh, misconstrued. Because I'll tell you, that when that test starts asking some interesting questions, it helps to understand some of these uh, signaling formats. So what are the three self-clocking ones now that I've got you asking about that? What are the three self-clocking formats? Which reminds me, I'm going to write this down so I have this ready for you guys on Monday. No one's going to answer? Polar what? Polar bear? RZ polar. Okay. Much better. RZ polar. Two more. What are they? CDI is another one. Bipolar with zero suppression, yes. Now, how come RZ Polar is self-clocking? Okay, good. Both of you are correct on that one because each clock cycle contains either a plus five or a negative five in addition to what uh, Airman Finnemore is saying, which is changing with every one data. It's not changing with the zero, but it's changing with the one. So what are the three stages of PCM? Sampling, quantizing, and encoding. Good. So, why do we have it? Why do we have PCM? You can say, I don't know. It's okay. Don't know, sir. <laughs> okay. PCM format. Converts analog to digital. Why? You're on the so right track. I, I couldn't hear you. Speak up. To speak? So our, our computers and stuff can... Uh, so, so your repeaters can do what? I gotta turn you up. It's okay. I gotta change my mouse, it's really giving me a rough time here while he's writing. It allows you to speak digitally. Okay. Let me uh, change my mouse settings here. I want to show you guys something here.
Has anybody ever heard of this one? Has anybody ever heard of the program Audacity? Yes, sir. Sure. <laughs> hey, okay. So, <laughs> eh, what the heck? Little Gene Autry never hurt anybody, right? Okay, Audacity. And this is just a song I just pulled up. Yeah, 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 yeah. See this? Save as an industry? Do you see yes, this sir. part right here? Well, yes, let me explain something about PCM. Because that's what it is, is that Audacity is doing PCM for you. The difference is, is we're looking at sampling 8,000 times a second for voice. Not like this where it's, uh, you know, basically covering a large range. And you can see 220 to 260 kilobits per second versus 8,000 times a second. And I think we can go all the way up to something called insane which is 320 K holy crap so think of it this way you really don't want uh, a lot of quality to your speech because you know because you the more you sample it the better the quality but with 8,000 times a second you really don't need anything else faster than that and you're using it in your uh, prick 150s if you hadn't noticed before right before you changed everything over to uh, from analog to digital I think in one of those digital uh, boxes that's where your PCM happens you can find it in the tech order but I just wanted to show you audacity just to give you an idea that yes a lot of these programs out there that do audio are saving it in PCM a lot different than what it used to be. So now you see my jingle bells there, or silver bells. All right, so. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do a lot of crazy stuff on the, around Christmas time. Things like uh, everything that you've learned in this particular block, as far as multiplexing is concerned, you can do when it comes to synchronizing the lights to your music because that's what it uses everything that you've learned transfers into that so if you just think this is just a military operation no it translates all over into uh, the commercial side of the house you would not believe how many times I've come across the signaling formats that just my little program use uh, just to sync everything up to the music so that's what I do for a hobby, not to mention I make antennas and a couple other things too. So is there any other questions before I turn you loose? And everybody's going, oh, he's turning loose, yay! Or that you want covered on Monday and Tuesday. So I got down right now signaling formats and PCM. Is there anything else that you guys want me to cover on Monday? If not, I'm on here most of the time. Yes, I'm a quasi-gamer. I, pl I play World of Tanks. And I'm sure you guys play a lot over there, too. So, I'm on Discord a lot. If you just want to leave me a message, you know how to uh, send a message out. So, please, do not be afraid to ask or send me a personal message. I don't have a problem in answering your questions at any time. 
as long as I see them in time. It may take me a little bit longer as opposed during the day when we're uh, you know supposed to be here. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Has your arm gotten better? Or your hand? <laughs> Why is that? Because when you watched us in Block 2, you had like a put ice on it all the time. Oh, yes. I remember you guys now. Yeah, it, uh... <sighs> that hurt. I'm trying to remember what I did to it. Glad you remembered. Thank you. Thank you for asking. No problem. But it's healed. Nicely. Oh. Alright, any other questions before I turn you loose? If not, thank you guys for attending. And uh, we'll see you on Monday at 1 o'clock. And again, send me your questions, uh, you know, either in the chat or personally. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful day, and we'll see you on Monday. You, sir. Have a good day, sir. All right. Take care, guys. You too. And you're welcome. Mm.